uh, chapter eight is going to start to introduce the uh, concepts of um, similar triangle or similar polygons. Okay, and so, uh, a couple things regarding similarity. Okay, if polygons are similar, this, the symbol that's going to be used looks like this. It's, it's called a tilde. Okay, it's on the keyboard to the left of the number one on that top row of your keyboard. Okay, um, and that just means similar to. And if something is similar to, it means that uh, two, two specific properties. It means that all corresponding angles are congruent. And it means that all corresponding sides have the same ratio. And the word for that uh, is uh, that they are proportional. So here's what that kind of means. First of all, the, the statement, the similarity statement you can write based on what we see in this diagram here. So looking at this diagram, we see that uh, angle A has the one tick mark. So does angle D. So if these are similar to each other, the statement that we will use for this uh, is triangle ABC is similar to triangle. And you're going to match up the corresponding parts. So A with the one tick mark matches with D with the one tick mark. B has two tick marks, so does E. So those match up in the same orientation on your statement, the second letter. And then finally, C has the three tick marks, so does F. And so this would be your similarity statement based on what we see in the di diagram with the pieces uh, of information labeled here. Okay. And so the very first thing uh, here is that uh, angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. So that's this first part. The corresponding angles are congruent in similar figures. Okay. The fact that the sides are proportional looks like this. What it means is if you took the side opposite A, which is side A, and you looked the corresponding side in the, in the similar triangle is labeled as K over A, or sorry, KA, you would set up a ratio of KA to A. That's the, the corresponding ratio, and that's going to be the same for all corresponding parts. So the side opposite B and the side opposite the angle corresponding to B is KB over B. And then here, the side opposite C and the side opposite F, KC over C. And so what you can see here is that this ratio, the multiplier to get from any part here uh, is you multiply by a factor of K. So K is the multiplier uh, for these. Okay, and so the ratio of parts just uh, means that corresponding pieces that match up have uh, equal ratios. All right, so you're going to be asked to do a couple different things on this. Uh, I'm going to start with this first question. It's related. It's, it's because uh, if two polygons are congruent, it means that they're similar and uh, in addition to that, they're equal. Okay, and so when you look at this congruent statement, what this means is that all of the pieces that match up uh, are going to be congruent to each other. Okay, so based on this congruence statement, so again, this is a, a slightly different, uh, this is congruence and, and not just similarity. So this one, the, the sides aren't just proportional, but they're uh, equal to each other. So what you would do on a problem like this, and I'm just going to talk through it because it's just kind of vaguely related to similarity, is I would go through and find all the angles first. Okay, so I see angle X, I see angle P, and I see angle V are, are parts of the questions. It wants you to find what are the matching angles to each of these. So here I see in the statement, X is the very first letter used. So on the other side of that congruent statement, we take the first letter, which is R, and that would be your solution. So A would be the correct answer for that first part. If I go down to angle P, angle P is the last letter, so that corresponds to W. W is option F. And then finally, uh, the last one, angle V. Angle V is the second letter of the second statement, so that corresponds to the second letter Y, which is option D. Okay, and so that would be the first part to this. Find your uh, the corresponding pieces of the angles. And then next, find the sides. And the way that you would find the sides is now, instead of just finding the one piece, 
find the two. So P and X are first and last. That corresponds to R and W. It can be in either order, RW or WR. So that would be G, QZ. Q and Z are the, the third to last and second to last. So that corresponds to third to last, second to last, S and T. So in either order, uh, ST would be your answer. And then finally, the last one, P and S, are the last two letters. So that corresponds to QW in either order, QW or WQ, which would be option H. So uh, that's using the congruence statement, which is related closely to the similarity statement, uh, the only difference being that the sides aren't proportional, they're congruent. Uh, in that. All right, so I'm going to talk through these first couple examples and then we'll build off of them in the next slide. So if we look at this uh, next problem here to the left. Okay, so here you're told that these two triangles are similar. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that the uh, images are oriented in the same direction. Okay, that's usually the, the best way uh, to answer these questions is to solve them visually. And so the first thing I would do is make sure that this statement is uh, um, modeled in the diagram as well. So J, which is the top angle, is, is congruent to P, the top angle, so those match up. K is the far right angle, that corresponds to R, the far right angle. L is the bottom left angle, that corresponds to Q, the bottom left angle. So what we see right here is that these uh, two figures are matched up. They're already oriented in the same direction. And so that makes it easier to solve this visually. And so this, in this problem, you're not finding angles, you're finding the sides. And so if we take our unknown side, which is X, we take that unknown over the corresponding piece in the other triangle is 10. And we set up that ratio, X over 10. And we're going to set it equal to the known ratio. Well, the known ratio involves, again, we don't have anything for QR. We have PQ, and that corresponds to JL. And so when you take those two, so we know that this is our corresponding ratio, either 32 over 8 or 8 over 32. Since X is what we started with in the top of our fraction, we're going to use 32 on top, and that means 8 is on the bottom. And so now if you multiply both sides by 10, you get your solution. 8 goes into 32 4 times. 4 times 10 is 40. And so that would be uh, your answer for that using the properties that if the triangles are similar, okay, then their corresponding sides are proportional. All right, let me show, uh, or let me walk through this last question on this slide, and then we'll have you try some of the harder uh, versions of these on the next slide. Okay, so here, if we're looking at these two, we're told that these are similar. Okay, so the first thing we would want to do is redraw, or that I'm going to do, is I'm going to redraw this so they're oriented in the same direction. Okay, and so here's my smaller uh, figure written. My right angle goes down to the bottom left, so that's here. If I look opposite that angle is an angle of 121 degrees, so I'm going to write that. Um, if I look, the, the leg the, of this right angle that's going to go up is 9 at the base of this uh, angle here is 56 degrees, and then opposite that side is 13. So all I've done is I've reoriented this figure, and I've labeled the pieces, but now I see it more visually because these are similar to each other, and I can see how the parts match up. And here's what I see. I see that if I want to solve for x, x corresponds to 13, so x over 13 is the same as my other sides are 9 and 12. Since 12 is the side in the same figure as x, that goes on top. The corresponding piece, 9. And so if I multiply both sides by 13, here is my answer. Remember, you can enter your answer uh, as a calculation. And if you do the calculation itself, you get 17.33 for that solution. So again, either the calculation or calculated value gives you your size. So that's using proportional sides. The second part to this question is asking for y. And notice, y represents this angle right here. So that's this angle here. 
So what I need to do in order to solve for y is I know that y minus 20 is going to be equivalent to whatever this measure is. Well, I have an angle of 121, an angle of 56, and an angle of 90 degrees. What's the total sum of angles in uh, quadrilateral? Four sides, 4 minus 2 times 180 gives me my pattern, 360. And so if I take 360 and I start subtracting what I have, so I have 121, I have 56, and I have 90, that's going to leave me with my last answer, which is 93. Notice that's not my solution, right? That's just what this angle is equal to, 93. And so if I equate the expression y minus 20 equal to 93, and I add 20 to both sides, now I get my solution. Uh, 113 uh, is the answer for that. Okay, and so that's, uh, again, the, the process for uh, working with these similarities. Okay, if you have similar figures, Corresponding angles are equal or congruent. Uh, corresponding sides are proportional. All right, so let's take a look at some of the harder questions. I'm actually going to I'm going to copy my notes here real quick because um, it's the same. This is based on the same set of notes. All right, so looking at that same set of notes there. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, notice I changed this slightly here. Uh, find angle S. I, uh, given this, uh, this similarity statement, PZT is, triangle PZT is similar to triangle QSR, and you're told that angle T is 43, and angle Q is 67. And I want you uh, to see if you can find... Um, what is uh, angle S? Okay, so the, the clue to this is to make sure you orient your diagrams so they're facing the same direction. Okay, so if I look at the way that this statement right here is laid out, P corresponds to Q. So that means P would be 67. Uh, Z corresponds to S. So notice that these aren't oriented in the same direction. So what I would do is I would take this triangle and I'm going to redraw it. So I'm going to redraw so that P corresponds to Q. So I'll write Q here. Z corresponds to S. So I'll write S here. And then finally T corresponds to R. So I'll write that here as well. So what this now allows me to do is to say that uh, Q is 67. Okay, R corresponds to T, so that's 43. And so I can find S by taking my total sum of the angles in the triangle, subtracting what I have, 67 and 43, and that's going to give me my answer. But orienting the, the triangles in the same direction allows you to sort of see that more clearly. And if that's the case here, uh, you get your answer to be 70. You can enter the calculation or the calculated value. All right, so that's a, a slightly higher level of difficulty, it, like reorient the figures in order to find the right pieces. All right, I want you to try this uh, second example on this slide. So this is another more challenging question. It is straight from like an, an old SAT or a projected SAT. So uh, most of them will involve trig ratio. So you will see that here a little bit later in this chapter. Okay, but this is another case where you have these two right triangles. You're told that ABC is similar to EDC. So you know that A and E correspond. B and D correspond. And C uh, and or these two angles C uh, will correspond as well. So when you look at these, um, you're told that um, AE has a total length of 36. And so what you want to do is you want to figure out, how can I find what this portion of that side 36 is? Well, you know that you have these similar triangles where the corresponding parts, AB, corresponds to ED. So these two sides 
have the same ratio as every other pair of sides. So what is the ratio between the sides? What factor converts the smaller side into the larger side? You multiply by 5. And so you know that you have this ratio of parts of x and 5x, or a and 5a, or b and 5b. So if we look at this portion right here, and I'm going to use uh, the letter Y here because I have like what looks like an X on my times symbol. So if I say that this uh, portion from A to C is Y, that means that its corresponding portion over here is 5 times that, so 5Y. And now I have my, uh, my um, segment addition. Y plus 5Y adds up to 36. So if 6y is equal to 36, that means that y itself is 6. Is this what it's asking you to find? No, it wants CE. Well, CE is 5 times 6. And so you would enter your answer as either the calculation or the calculated value of 30. Okay. So again, be careful. This is a, one of the harder questions that you might see uh, involving these problems. All right, so that brings us to this, the last slide that we're going to look at involving similarity. And it's this concept of how do you relate uh, similarity of parts, areas, and even volumes, which we'll get to later in the year when we talk about uh, three-dimensional solids. Okay. First, the perimeter of similar polygons. So perimeter is a one-dimensional measurement. And so that means that any one-dimensional part, so here the P represents part, not necessarily perimeter, but any one-dimensional part, okay, has the ratio of M to N. Okay? So if I said that this was a length of 2 and this was a length of 6, okay, what that means is that every given one-dimensional part you'd multiply by 3 to find the corresponding part. And so if this was a length of 5, that means this would be a length of 5 times 3. And so whatever the ratio is uh, for parts, it's true for all of them. And that means that the total, if the total perimeter of this figure was 10, then that means the perimeter of this figure is going to be what? Perimeter is, is a one-dimensional part. So you have this ratio of parts here of 1 to 3 which means that you have uh, either a conversion factor of 1 to 3 or 3 to 1. If we're going from smaller to larger, we would multiply, so this larger perimeter would be 30. Okay. Now, what if instead of giving that information, what if I gave you the larger perimeter first? What if I said that this larger perimeter is 21? Well, it can't be because of the numbers there, but let's say... Um, 36. If this larger perimeter was 36, then what would the smaller perimeter be? The ratio of parts now we would use to go from the larger to smaller, we'd multiply by one-third, so one-third of that would give you 12. Okay, so the ratio of any one-dimensional part is the same in similar figures. Now, that changes when we deal with areas, because areas are two-dimensional measurements. And uh, if you have a ratio of parts of M to N, then the ratio of areas, which is a two-dimensional measurement, is going to have that ratio for each dimension being measured. So it's going to have it for both dimensions, which means you're squaring it. So if we come back to this same thing, 2 to 6 here, if the ratio of parts is 2 to 6 or 1 to 3, right, you can reduce them then that means that the ratio of areas is going to be 1 squared to 3 squared, or 1 to 9, which means your conversion factors would be 1 over 9 or 9 over 1. And so again, if, if I were to tell you that the area of this figure was 10, then what would be the area of the larger figure? Area is two-dimensional, so we go to 3 squared over 1 squared, which is 9 times that. And so if you took 9 times 10, you would get 90. If instead I had told you, let's say we started with the area of the larger figure instead. So let's say this larger figure had an area of 54, and we wanted to find the area of the smaller one. Now we would be using the, the ratio 
still the, t the ratio of areas is 1 to 9 or 9 to 1, we would use the fraction 1 over 9 as the conversion factor. So 54 times 1 over 9 would give you 6, and you could find your area that way. Now, we're not going to do this yet, but what if we went to volumes? Volumes are a three-dimensional measurement, so what do you think the ratio of parts in a volumes are going to be? M to N. Volumes are three dimensions. So it's each of those ratios for, or each, that ratio for each dimension, uh, when we get to that point, the ratio of volumes will be uh, like the, the ratio of the sides uh, cubed. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of these uh, problems here. I want you first to see if you can answer these two questions on the top. Okay, this is just the straightforward, do you understand what these ratios are re referencing, and can you answer like the, the basic application of them? So uh, what would be the ratio of perimeters and the ratio of areas of the, the given questions? If we take what was given, we see corresponding sides, which are one-dimensional parts. So 7 to 3 is the ratio of parts. And the corresponding ratio of areas would be 7 cubed to 3, or sorry, 7 squared to 3 squared, which is 49 to 9. So if you want to write what's the ratio of corresponding perimeters, is perimeter a one dimensional part or a two dimensional area? One dimensional part. So you can write that as a ratio or a fraction. So 7 over 3 would be that answer. What's the corresponding areas would be 49 to 9. And so that would be the ratio of your areas. Okay, so any one-dimensional parts stays the same. Any uh, two-dimensional areas, it's that ratio squared. All right, now, what do you do with that if you're solving a problem? Let's go down to this uh, problem here, or the problems here at the bottom left. Okay, so I'm going to talk through the first one and have you do the, the second one. So in this first one, if you are told that two similar decagons have corresponding lengths in the ratio of 7 to 2, so that means the ratio of parts is 7 to 2. If you were dealing with ratio of areas, it would be 7 squared to 2 squared. So those are your conversions. If you're converting to parts, it would either be 7 over 2 or 2 over 7. Those are your possible conversion factors. If you're converting for areas, it would be 49 over 4 or 4 over 49. Again, depending on whether you're making something bigger or smaller, you would choose the, the value that's greater than 1 or less than 1. So in this problem here, if you start with a length of 42, the larger decagon has a perimeter of 42. Perimeter is one-dimensional. That means you're going to use the parts. And you want to find the smaller one. Well, which of these conversion factors would make a number smaller, 7 over 2 or 2 over 7? It's the one, the smaller is where the numerator is less than the, new, the denominator. So you would then multiply this by 2 sevenths, and that would give you your answer. You can enter a calculation like this. If you did calculate, 7 goes into 42, 6 times, 6 times 2 is 12. And so that would be your answer. Okay, so try the next question. See if you can answer it. Based on a given ratio of parts, can you find what a new area would be kind of following along that same process? And they start with the parts. The ratio of parts is given as 4 to 5, which means the ratio of any corresponding areas would be 4 squared, or 16, to 5 squared, 25. So if we're dealing with parts, we have a, a conversion factor of 4 over 5, or 5 over 4, if we're going from big to small or small to big. And the areas would be 16 over 25, or 25 over 16. Again, depending on whether we're going from big to small, small to big, we would choose the value greater than 1 or less than 1. So if we take our given measurement, 200, and that's the area. Notice we're taking areas now. So the conversion factors we're going to use are either 16 over 25 or 25 over 16. And we have the larger one. We want to make it smaller. So which of these conversion factors will make 200 smaller? 16 over 25. And so if you multiply with that, you get your answer, uh, 200 times 16 over 25 gives you an answer of 128. And so there would be your solution. All right. So let's, uh, got two, two last ones here to go through. Let's try this middle one first. 
you see it visually set up. Uh, you see um, the, the statements talk about how the uh, dilation, dilation just means the enlarging or reducing. Hey, but see if you can answer those two questions based on what you see in the diagram and what you can label from that. All right, for this problem, again, it is already set up where it's uh, visually oriented in the same direction. Again, that's something that is very useful because solving these visually uh, tend to be an easier way to approach it. And so first, if we look at D, angle D we see is lined up right here. That corresponds to H. So that means that those are congruent angles. We have our answer just by looking at it. Okay, next we have AB. So to find AB here, uh, AB is this whole length, and that corresponds to this smaller measurement. And so if we, we can do this a couple different ways. Okay, so one way that we can do this is we can take this given ratio. So the ratio of parts, the scale factor of 5 to 3, means that that is the ratio of parts, the ratio of areas, if we needed it, would be 5 squared to 3 squared, or 25 to 9. We don't need that. This is all we're going to need. So it results in a ratio of either 3 over 5 or 5 over 3, depending on whether we're going uh, to make something bigger or smaller. So if we start with 21, and we want to get the length AB, are we going to need to make that bigger or make it smaller? Bigger. So we're going to use the ratio of 5 thirds. 3 goes into 21, 7. 7 times 5 is 35. And so that's how you would answer these two questions um, kind of visually. Now, we could have also set this up using proportions. Okay? We talked about uh, in the earlier slides that when you have similar figures, sides are proportional. So that means that this whole side AB, which I'll call X, corresponds to the smaller side 21. in the same ratio as the two uh, known pieces. Or actually, so the, the known piece is this ratio of 5 to 3. We don't, we're not given any two specific lengths, but we're given that ratio. And so if we multiply both sides by 21 here, 3 goes into 21 seven times. So we get the same answer, x is 35, uh, from that last, or the, from that question. All right, the last. Uh, problem I want you to try uh, here, this final one. Given these two triangles are similar, uh, can you find what the area of the uh, larger triangle is with just using the given information? All right, so here you're told that these triangles are similar and they're already oriented in the same direction. So you know that these part of 8 and this part of 32, they match up their corresponding parts. So we see that the ratio of parts is 8 to 32, which can be reduced, right, to 1 to 4. So that means that the larger triangle, uh, each side is four times the corresponding side of the smaller triangle. Now, this is asking you to calculate the area. So if we take this ratio and square it, we get 1 squared to 4 squared, which is 16. And so our conversion factor for area is either 1 over 16 or 16 over 1. We're going from small to large. So if we take 29, we multiply by the ratio that makes it larger, which is 16 over 1. So I can keep it just written uh, as that uh, calculation, or I can do the calculation I would get 464 as my solution here. And so there would be your final uh, answer for that.